confusion and uncertainty in East Palestine, Ohio, after the toxic train derailment. Is the water safe to drink? Is the air okay to breathe? Moments ago, Ohio Governor Mike DeWine announced that the water in East Palestine is safe to drink after new tests detected no contaminants. But property owners with private wells are encouraged to keep drinking bottled water until their wells are tested. We've also just learned that the soil at the derailment site has not been removed by the rail company yet. Experts say removal is key to cleanup because the soil acts almost like a sponge, soaking up the toxic chemicals and then releasing them into the soil and the air and the water over time, adding to the mounting concerns of the dead fish that CNN saw in a waterway near the derailment site. CNN's Jason Carroll has been talking to East Palestine residents who no longer know whom to trust. We're strongly recommending those who have not yet had their water source checked to use bottled water, and bottled water is being made available. More than a week after a toxic train derailment that led to the evacuation of much of this small Ohio town, state health officials are urging some East Palestine residents to drink bottled water until water tests are complete. Uh, this is going to be particularly important if you are pregnant, if you are breastfeeding, or if you are preparing formula for an infant. Officials say the toxic spill was largely contained the day after the derailment and that tests have shown the air quality is safe. But they have found low levels of contaminants in four nearby waterways spanning seven and a half miles, including Leslie Run, a creek which runs through East Palestine and neighboring Negley, right through the back of Kathy Reese's property. In the back of your property back here, they found dead Yeah, they saw dead fish. Reese says she has been drinking bottled water instead of well water ever since she started spotting dead fish in the creek following the derailment. She says she's still waiting for the state to come and test her well water. Air-wise, I feel okay. Water-wise, no. I, no. There's just too many chemicals and stuff that were spilled that they still don't want to identify completely. An Ohio Department of Natural Resources official estimates some 3,500 fish in the state have died following the train derailment. These people saw the flames from their homes and worry their neighborhood still may not be safe. What about testing water or ground? Nothing yet. No. And I guess that I don't recommend you put anything in the ground. I mean, vegetables or tomatoes or anything this year because we don't know. I don't think they're going to do enough. And some residents say they have been frustrated by what they describe as a lack of communication with officials on the ground. We pass all of the creeks and there's crew after crew with white hoses and black hoses all through the creeks. They're not telling us why and this is, go this is daily. I'm driving my children to school past all of this and they're asking me questions that I don't have answers to. Some of their questions unanswered. We found getting information just as challenging. Can okay, you tell me, are they pumping water out or are you uh, pumping water back in? Yeah. Talk to the guys up at the yeah. top of the hill, sir. We're, we're just grunts. We're just trying to get a sense of what, what those pumps are. Can just someone just... Norfolk Southern can tell you everything. That's the hotline. They can tell you everything. You realize people are calling this number and no one is getting back to them. That, we're just told to direct people to that number. The governor asked by reporters Tuesday if he would feel comfortable living in East Palestine. Look, I, I think that I would be drinking the bottled water um, and I would be continuing to uh, um, find out what the tests were showing as far as the air. Um, I would be alert and, and concerned, but uh, I think I would probably be back in my house. But residents like Kathy Reese say they are left with few choices. Just, uh, I guess, pray and uh, keep drinking bottled water until we know for sure what's going on. And again, Jake, while the state EPA says the municipal water source is now safe to drink, that according to their most recent testing, uh, still recommending that those with who have private wells, people like who you just heard from, Kathy Reese there, still recommending that those residents in East Palestine make sure that they get their water tested. Uh, people like uh, Kathy Reese will be some, one of many tonight attending a meeting uh, with officials hoping to get more information about everything that's going on, including some of the cleanup efforts that are going on right behind us. Jay. Uh, Jason, you mentioned uh, Norfolk Southern. I just want to note that uh, their revenues uh, of $3.3 billion declared last October 
uh, we're at an all-time quarterly uh, record, uh, Norfolk Southern, which is not getting back to the good people of East Palestine, Ohio. Well, it should also be noted they said that they were going to be setting up a fund, a $1 million fund for the folks in East Palestine. And I have to tell you, some people on the ground feel like that's a drop in the bucket compared to their profits. Yeah, that's the change in their, in their sofa. Uh, Jason Carroll, thanks so much. My next guest is an associate professor of environmental health science at The Ohio State University, Karen Dannemiller. Uh, professor Dannemiller, thanks so much uh, for joining us. Right now, officials are monitoring a large plume of contamination moving down the Ohio River. At least 3,500 fish in surrounding waterways have died. There's a 1,000 square foot area around the immediate site of the derailment where toxic chemicals were burned. Is it too soon, do you think, for anyone out there to be saying that the air is safe or the water is safe? It's really in the early phases of, of this particular phase of what's happening. Uh, we've moved now past the acute immediate danger of when this happened and residents were asked to evacuate. And now that people are able to come back to the area, we're starting the more long-term phase of determining what's going on. There's a lot of ongoing testing in the different environments, in the soil, in the water, and the air to determine what's in different locations. And uh, we'll, we'll find out answers to these questions as time goes on. Does it alarm you at all that some of the people who return to the area are reporting strong chemical smells and that they're suffering from headaches? So uh, a lot of the compounds that were on the train are VOCs or volatile organic compounds. And these are chemicals that tend to partition into the gas phase. Anything that you can smell is a volatile organic compound. One thing to keep in mind is that while our, oz our noses are pretty good indicators of chemicals within our environment, they, the odor threshold doesn't always correspond to the level at which you would expect to have potential health effects occurring. So for ex an example, you might peel an orange and smell uh, those smells, but those aren't necessarily harmful to you. Um, and there are other chemicals that you can't necessarily smell at levels at which they may potentially be harmful. So that's something important to keep, to keep in mind. The thing that's really going to determine what potential risks are resulting from the chemicals that might be in these different areas are the measurements that are currently ongoing. One of the chemicals on the train, vinyl chloride, is used to make PVC piping. Exposure has been linked to rare forms of liver, brain, and lung cancer. When it burns, as in the controlled release, it creates a toxic gas, um, one that was actually used as a weapon during World War I. Federal and state officials claim they're testing the air every day. It's safe. They're not finding it. Are you at all worried that the testing might not be expansive enough? As you mentioned, this is a pretty complicated situation in terms of where these chemicals went into the environment. Uh, a lot of the chemicals that enter into the air initially are going to have a relatively short timeline on which they're at that site before they move away uh, from the area. As you said, the phosgene that was being released at the time uh, has probably stopped to be released af after the burning was completed. Uh, some of the other questions that still remain are how much of these chemicals got into the soil, which you mentioned acts like a sponge and might hold those chemicals there that can then continue to off gas. So we're really waiting for those measurements to come back to determine where those chemicals are in the environment and looking for those numbers from the ongoing sampling.